are we going to get another boat? Yeah, I'd say eventually. We love Clarity. Clarity is a great boat. A faster boat, I think would be interesting. For now, Clarity is our girl and she does us right. Yeah. Yeah. Darren, this one is for you about <laughs> getting another dog. Oh, we just spent time with our surrogate. No. That's that's Pete. P-E-A-T, <laughs> not P-E-T-E. -E. Right, Pete? Pete is in the moss. As in the stench. Yes, the stench. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I really miss having a dog. I know. And we wish we could just go get another dog. But it does yeah. complicate travel plans. Yeah, it's um, if we have any hope of going to the South Pacific next season, can't bring a dog. How about the insurance question? We have catastrophic policies. So what's our deductible? It's about 7,500 per year for the both of us. And we have, I think, up to $2 million in coverage. We have to uh, basically pay for our own doctor's appointments. Yeah. We have such minimal health care needs, knock on wood. Yeah. Um, that w we feel good with our deal. It's 250 per month for the both of us. Yeah. That's not the entire story with our, our medical coverage, but we have medevac benefits as part of uh, the Dan. Dan Diver. And that's like 50, $55 per year. And they will uh, work with us to get us back to the United States. Right. Otherwise, healthcare being so much cheaper just about anywhere else in the world, aside from the United States, uh, for the minor stuff, you can get it taken care of in, in a lot of countries for less than the cost of a nice dinner out. So um, that's how we handle the medical insurance. <coughs> wow, that was a nice little soak in the shallows, wasn't it? Uh, how did you get to be all done up you here? Know, <laughs> you gotta look my best for the... Uh, the peeps? The peeps. Well, we came back here because, well, frankly, we couldn't remember the rest of the questions. <laughs> There's a lot of them. <laughs> and these are from our patrons and our Facebook group. So thank you all for uh, putting out your questions. Ask us anything. <laughs> okay, um, Demir says, I gotta ask, what the hell is going on with boat prices lately? Mm. I get the supply and demand thing, but the prices are just insane. So we'd love to hear the current, your thoughts on the current market. And he feels that brokers are preying on unexperienced people like himself. Hmm, well, boat brokers can be blamed for a lot of stuff, but not for high boat prices. Uh, they are helping facilitate deals. That's what they're supposed to do, but it's really the sellers that are setting the prices these days because uh, demand is so much higher than supply. I was just talking to an, an industry expert recently and there are big shortages of fiberglass resin and uh, epoxy resins and stainless steel and you found shortages in foam. Foam, yep. Uh, so a lot of the building materials for boats are in short supply right now. From hurricane damages. And, and COVID. Yeah. Uh, so the lead times on new boats, depending on what design you want, are a couple or three or even four years. And if you're like us, you don't have that kind of patience, you want to boat now. So there's lots of demand. Yeah. Uh, as long as the stock market and the real estate market is thriving the way it has been, I don't see boat prices softening very much in the next 18 months or so. And at least we're not hearing of what's happening in the real estate market where offers are coming in over ask. Right. So that's not happening in the boat market, but don't expect to get the 10 or 20% off. Nobody has a crystal ball. The market could tank literally tomorrow. But I don't think it's going to. I, I think that the Federal Reserve and the central banks around the world will continue to print money. And that's not necessarily a good thing. I think it's going to lead to inflationary problems, but it's going to support prices. So unfortunately, I think, well, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on whether you own or not, I think boat prices stay high and may actually creep up a bit with time and uh, so with that we want to announce <laughs> that clarity is for sale for five hundred thousand seven hundred thousand dollars I mean, <laughs> <laughs> so no if somebody offered you five hundred thousand would you take it well i mean first of all 
Claire's not really for sale. We, we love the boat. But isn't a boat always for sale? A boat is always, I'm a capitalist, what can I say? I mean, there is a number out there. So what would we do? I mean, just buy some goats and open up a pizza place? Or, I, I mean, I just don't know. Goat so, yoga. Goat yoga. It's a thing. Yeah, clarity's not for sale. But if somebody came along and set the price high enough, I mean, you'd have to take it. I mean, Whoa. Scary. Careful what you uh, put out there. <laughs> All right, next question. So Roberto, he says, have you ever considered to offer paid cruising lessons like hoist hosting someone who can already sail and anchor and so on, but who would like to make the big jump like you? And would you host for some weeks? I think it's invaluable to yeah. get experience on a boat. If you're wanting to come do this, you're only going to learn so much from the YouTube. Uh, but actually getting out and doing it with somebody who's doing it, it's a great idea. Yeah. We've talked about it. There's kind of two barriers though for us. First of all, how do we schedule it with you if we don't know where we're going to be in a few months? Yeah. So that makes it hard for you to make reservations. And then also, <laughs> we don't have any licenses. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have insurance. So if we were going to do that, we'd have to be fairly directed in, in making that happen. And I think the third reason is we wouldn't be able to do YouTube at the same time. Uh, there just wouldn't be any time, no. no. So who knows, maybe someday we'll switch gears completely and, and do that type of a charter because I think that would be the kind that appeals to me. Is It's sort of like what our consulting calls are like. People want to know what it's like and I could really see the, the joy and benefit of doing uh, an extended sort of con like consulting. Be a lot of yeah. Good question. Eric. Okay, do you guys ever have a really bad day and just wish you were anywhere else besides the boat? We're still new to this whole thing, but we've had a couple of those days where we think, why are we doing this again? Does that still happen to you guys or is it a point that you get past? Great question. I would say we still have those days, but I would rather say they're more like moments now because we've realized that they pass and for sure we're human and those things yeah, you, you reach your limit, and then you breathe and, and realize that they do pass. But especially at first, when you built this whole thing up and put, put a lot of plans together to make this happen, those first few times when it's uh, an all-night affair watching the radar and the thunderstorms coming through and hoping that your anchor doesn't drag, yeah, you have those moments where you're like, why am I doing this? This is crazy. But then you wake up the next day, it's all calm and serene, and you realize, there's no other way of getting out to this spot to see this amazing beauty and the appreciation comes flooding back in. So yeah, yeah it still happens, but I think we know that it's gonna pass when it is bad. And you've probably heard this a million times, but <clears throat> the high, there are high highs and then low lows. That's cruising. <laughs> with this cruising life. So I don't know if it's like childbirth that I haven't had kids, but they say you forget what labor's like and you have another kid. Have you considered visiting Hurricane Safe Harbor, the Rio Dulce, Guatemala? <laughs> well, yes, we have, actually, it's very funny much. you should ask. Yes, we are still considering Rio Dulce. Um, you've spent some time in Guatemala. Yes, I was. I did a Habitat for Humanity back in 2003. You hablo some Espanol. Yes, I do speak some Spanish. I do not. Uh, it's been a while, but once I get back in that culture, I can usually pick it back up. And we would love to go to Guatemala. We were gonna do that a couple years ago, but sugar was uh, getting too old for that. Yeah. So we are, it's on the radar for right now. We, we, we knocked Panama off. Yeah, Panama's out, I think. Um, like you, we're watching the news. We're trying to figure out like, you know, is the world getting back to normal or isn't it? And you know, one day we, seems like things are getting better and the next day it seems like it's not. We just don't wanna be in any place where we're stuck. Yes. That's the main point. Yes. Assuming YouTube is going well for you, where do you see yourselves in the next three to five years? Wow. No I have, clue. I have no clue either, but I would say maybe New Zealand. New Zealand sounds nice. That'd be yeah. Nice. Hopefully that they, they open up the country so we can come visit. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, yeah, we had no idea that we'd even be doing YouTube videos three years ago. Uh, certainly uh, five years ago. So how? What we're doing in five years? I have no idea. What? are your favorite channels that you'd love to hang out with? Oh, that's a good uh, question. We question. thought about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like most of what I see in terms of the uh, fellow YouTubers. There's a couple that I would probably avoid, but just about everybody else, 
I don't know. I'd love to meet a whole bunch of these folks. Yeah, I think at the top of our list would be <clears throat> Nahoa yeah, and Ashley and fun Willa. Hang out. Yeah, <laughs> um, I think the the. The uh, Delos crew would That'd be, be fun cool. to hang out with. That little nugget. <laughs> she seems really sweet. And then uh, I think Ron Sailing. Ron Sailing. That'd yeah. be cool. But there's so many. There's like 2,000 channels now. So we do not know uh, the majority of those. But our patrons, Heidi and Franny, they highly recommended Orion and Sophie Sailing. So I checked them out and I was like, right on. I love them. Yeah. So, yeah, that would be fun. Heidi and Franny's Garage, they've got a YouTube channel as well. They're you very check entertaining. It out. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, they got like over 40,000 followers. So. Yeah, it's about cars, not boats, but very cool. Very cool channel. How did we meet? <laughs> I okay. Love this. So, we met in the sixth grade, and yeah. we you had crushes on all my friends, not me. Um, and then in high school, we started having classes together and be we were friends yeah we were friends hanging out but we got together after our freshman year of college and that was 29 years ago this june Woo! We're <laughs> getting old. do we have any rituals slash habits that we perform regularly coffee for, <laughs> that's a, that's a ritual uh for example before setting sail going on a passage tying up the dinghy etc uh yeah yeah um i'm not very ocd in most cases, but when it comes to my boat rituals, things have to be a certain way. Well, I've got to have the dinghy uh, raised out of the water pretty much any time I'm not using it. Basically, we want to have the boat ready to go at any time. In case somebody were to drag or there were an emergency and we needed to, to move, uh, we're ready to go at any time. Before any motoring, really, I check the engines, the fluids, the belts to make sure that everything's topped up and ready to go and uh, basically just go around and, and do a safety check before we move the boat each time. Yeah, and I also <clears> make <throat> sure everything is stowed, like the soda stream, the shells, anything that could get tipped over. I pretty much expect that that will happen. So what are your go-to meals and snacks that uh -huh. you uh, prepare prior to a sale? All right, well, we like to try to eat healthy, and especially underway when you definitely need your energy. <clears throat> So high protein, um, would be hard boiled eggs, uh, maybe a tuna fish salad, fresh veggies cut up with hummus, and a quinoa salad with beans and veggies. You're what making else? me hungry. I know. Uh, lasagna, if we're gonna be out for a while, that's just a nice comfort food. Smoothies, of course, and those fat bombs, those are great underway. Uh, is that Jan? Yes. Uh, From Norway. Yes. Uh, what was your goal the first time you went sailing for a longer period? Does the sailing life become what you think and when you were planning? Oh, we had a <laughs> grand plan. We were going to sail around the world. Talk right? about the five-year plan. We had that. Oh, we yeah. We were sail around the world. We got five years. And yeah, that was a big mistake yeah. <laughs> because we weren't ready for it. The boat wasn't ready for it. And we also, I think we were a little short on dough. Yeah. So for all those reasons, we did not sail around the world, but we had a fantastic yeah. time. It was quite an adventure. And we learned so much about ourselves. And obviously we had a good enough time to go off and head off sailing twice more. Yeah. So yeah, um, did it live up to our expectations? This is going to be a subject for another video mm -hmm. where we talk to some new cruisers and get their reflections, but uh, in some ways it was much, much harder than we were expecting, and in some ways it was much, much better mm -hmm. than we were expecting. And it's really hard to... Is that a tease for the next video? That's a tease I for the next video, tease. yeah. Good one. I'll just say that YouTube can only show you so much of this lifestyle. Yeah. You really have to get out and do it, get the whole story. Okay, um, Melanie says, you both always seem to be in a good mood, especially with each other. Is there anything that you disagree about when sailing or that you've had to find workarounds for to avoid a fight? Well, we are human and we've been together almost 29 years, so. I wouldn't we, say that we necessarily fight about a particular thing. Maybe what's more accurate is one of us will get cranky yeah. For it, some reason uh, that probably doesn't have to do with the other person, but I'd say mostly we just get along. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right about being cranky. Like if you haven't been eating right, you may be eating more carbs and sugar and then not exercising and then throw in some, you know, stressful situations or decision makings. Like yeah. 
I think you can get. You can get kind of short. You gotta, you gotta let the little things go. There's yeah. no need <laughs> to get somebody spill something on your favorite towel. That would probably be me spilling it on her towel. You know, there's just no need to get upset. You just I think get cleaning true. it and, you know. Yeah, I think that's true. I think when we've had accidents, I've noticed, and maybe it's just we get older, we don't, like, get bummed that the other person did something. It's more of like, hey, I... It I, just happens. It happens, and it could have happened to me just as easy as you, and I wouldn't want... Could have. It will. <laughs> and it, I wouldn't want him to be upset with me, so I try to return that favor. You know? Yeah. Jim asks... Uh, what sort of electronics and apps do you use to plot your course, predict the weather, tide, current, uh, contacting marinas, and getting moorings? Uh, right now, our favorite is Aquamaps yeah. for the iPad. We also use a Raymarine chart plotter. And basically, we'll set out a, a route on the Aquamaps, just casually sitting around, just talking. And that'll give us a rough distance. Then we'll go to our Predict Wind app and get a routing forecast. So the Predict Wind app takes into account the weather that's forecast for the next couple of days and gives us kind of a rough schedule that we can that we can uh, count on. And from there, we try to stay out of marinas. Uh, but if you're approaching a marina, usually on 16 or 9, you can reach the marina. Or if you have a phone, you can call ahead. Some people actually do call ahead. We don't. We hardly ever plan that far in advance to our detriment sometimes, but uh, for some reason it usually works out. Yeah. All right, good question, Jim. Okay, this is from Darren. How often do you replace your running rigging? How often do you inspect your standing rigging? Does your insurance require to be professionally <coughs> inspected? Good question. So we do our standing rigging every 10 years, but we check it annually. And then the running rigging, we replace about every five years. So we're gonna get ready to do that soon. Yeah, we got new ropes coming. Uh, in addition to the annual inspection of the standing rigging, I'll frequently go up and take a look around, do a, a rough inspection before any major passage, just to make sure everything's in order. But 10 years to replace yeah. the standing rigging. And that's what insurance requires, every 10 years. And we did it, what, <clears throat> three years ago? Yeah. Did, Kim says, did you already know how to sew? Are there good online websites to help someone learn? And where do you get the resources to make the different things you've made? So I'm, I'm lucky that I grew up with a mother who sewed, my grandmother sewed, and so we had a machine in the house from the day I can remember. And I was making pillows at age five or six and clothing throughout high school. And so I learned, uh, that just from trial and error, which I highly recommend, just practice. It's Half of it's just learning how to work your machine. And so there's a ton of YouTube videos now, and sailright.com has great videos. <laughs> I also did a video on how to sew these cushions, so I will put a link in that. Uh, were there countries you felt you wanted to avoid or be close to uh, in terms of having vets, veterinarians, available for sugar in her older years and did you provision any special medical supplies for her spare meds uh, and this follow-up question is uh, this is a hard subject but did you bring along any euthanizing injections for sugar when she got to be uh, older uh, yeah okay well this is an important topic there were certain countries that we avoided because they didn't allow any sort of bulldog mixes. Sugar was half American bulldog and half lab. She wasn't a pit bull, but there are some islands you don't want bulldog species coming. Uh, and that's like Turks and Caicos is like that and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we avoided those spots, but we carried a good deal of meds on board for most of her sort of pain relief yeah. and scratches and that sort of stuff. We did not carry any euthanizing injections because you had done some research and it turns out you really need to be trained in how to administer those. But we did have our family vet set us up with a, uh, a cocktail, so to speak, of, uh, of medications, of drugs that would have put sugar uh, down uh, should we feel that that was necessary. Uh, of course, that would it's, it's hard to imagine what circumstances yeah. those would be, but you wouldn't want her suffering unnecessarily. 
but uh, yeah, tough subject. Very um, tough. Yeah, apps and computer programs that schedule and mm -hmm. recommend normal maintenance on boats, like Vessel Vanguard. Mm -hmm. Do you use something like that? How do you keep track of preventative maintenance on Clarity? Uh, there's two things. So we have an annual maintenance that we do with Clarity hauled out of the water, belts, fluids filters all get changed in the engines there's some hoses that get changed as well <clears throat> that's on an annual basis no matter how many hours we run typically we are under the hours uh, required to do those services and then Megan keeps track of when we do things like clean out the shower screens mm -hmm. and what else do you keep track of? you know I just use the notes app on my iPhone and I just write the dates for the uh, yeah like you said the shower cleaning the screens uh, how often I'm doing the defrosting on the freezer the floors the cleaning just the deeper clean type things yeah and we also write down things like when we change a protein propane bottle so yes. that we know how much propane we are using so that we can be sure that we get down to that last bottle we're not too far from getting a refill but yeah we don't use anything fancy just the notes program and then do our annual maintenance preventatively on the engines and how often do you practice man overboard hope to running and storm drills uh not often enough we do quiz each other from time to time about what we would do in cer certain circumstances in a man overboard situation we also use beacons so we have a man overboard beacon if one person were to fall overboard there would be a beacon that the other person could home in on but basically the way we look at it is we take preventative steps so that we don't go overboard we consider falling off the boat being a death sentence mm -hmm. it's a uh, very very difficult for double-handed crew to one for for one person to retrieve the other so we just try not to go over we are extra extra cautious and mindful with every step that we're taking on deck underway uh, we don't heave to on this boat uh, if things get really really rough we run before so we we always have sea room and uh, in terms of storm drills we are I guess really really conservative in terms of our sail plan so we are uh, we are reefing early and often. Stacy says, so we can't live without marine toilet paper as full-time cruisers. What can't you live without in the hygiene realm? <laughs> <laughs> I would say it's probably the Dr. Brommer's peppermint body wash. Chapstick. Oh. It's chapstick. <laughs> I, I can't go more than like an hour. I can't leave this boat without chapstick. I, I, gotta, I gotta have a dose on my hip there. How many times do you think you put it on it per day? <clears throat> We should count. 20, 30 times. <laughs> All right, your turn. But these lips, <laughs> these lips are so soft, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sylvain says, why a boat and why not a pontoon plane? That's a really good question. <laughs> I've never thought about a pontoon plane. Have you, Nick? Actually, I have, yeah. Where would we sleep? Okay, if you... And do they have a bathroom? If you, <laughs> if you search the internet, there's a photo out there someplace of a uh, DC-3 on floats with a little chimney coming out the side. And this is an Alaska bush plane. Uh, we worked in Alaska for a summer way back when, and I worked for a flight, float plane service. It would be incredible to go tour around the world on a float plane, but it's incredibly impractical because of all the fuel and maintenance costs. It would be extremely expensive, and then you You'd you, have to you write don't like little planes. I don't, and so you'd have to write the book, and get her in the air. <laughs> How do you feel about not packing anything? Just a couple sleeping bags and a little uh, grill. No, uh, I think I'm... That would be a good adventure though, wouldn't it? Yeah, definitely. Oh yeah, well yeah. that's a buy-in right there. I don't think so. All right, Diane says we just lost our propeller sailing in our home bay. What would you do if you lost your prop? Well, we'd put our spare prop on. It seems kind of crazy that you should carry a spare propeller, but props fall off way too often. It can happen for a variety of reasons. The lock nut can back off, the retaining screws and nuts can break and fall off, even the shaft can shear off. Actually, we know two friends who've lost props just this season. So uh, yeah, we would put on our spare prop and that would get us home. Should we have two spare props? <laughs> I hope not. <laughs> Uh, maybe this spare prop just gets us to a place where we can get another spare on board. But uh, yeah, yeah, good idea to carry a spare. Yeah. 
Uh, Tina says, what are your sleeping patterns like when it's windy and the waves crash against the holes? I have a hard time sleeping. How do you handle nights like those? Uh, I have a quick answer here. The more we've done this, the more I can, I can see the difference between uncomfortable and dangerous. There's a difference between uncomfortable and dangerous. If it's uncomfortable and the boat's kind of bouncing around because it's windy, I don't have a lot of trouble sleeping, do you? No, I've learned to use uh, podcasts or earplugs and just kind of get wedged in and do a lot of deep breathing. Breath holds really help me relax. She and, has no trouble sleeping. And fall asleep. Uh, <laughs> I wake up a lot, but... Now, if it's a potentially dangerous situation where we got high winds expected or there's thunderstorms in the area, you're going to find me right here, stretched out and sleeping for probably 15 and 20 minutes at a time, getting up, looking around. Uh, setting anchor alarms, that sort of thing. So when it's dangerously windy and we're in a precarious spot, and I'm I up and around that. <laughs> and she's asleep. <laughs> but it's, it is a lot to adjust to when you're new. Tina, like I know you guys just got your Leopard 46 and uh, I would just say it takes time to learn those noises. and, and You'll get a sixth sense about it, yeah. yeah. Cleaning products, <laughs> what do you use? Okay, so I like to use vinegar, baking soda. Uh, I like Myers soap for the laundry and the dish and then Dr. Brommer's for the body and uh, and then shampoo and conditioner. I'm always trying different things so I don't have a good one on that way but we I, try to not use toxic stuff. Yeah I do have Simple Green and I do have uh, Barkeeper's Friend for stainless and you know the um, sinks and that kind of thing. Uh, yeah we just try and go the natural way and try and stay away from the sulfur-based detergents. Can you compare the Bahamas before and after recent storms? Not a whole lot of difference. Uh, some of the anchorages up in the Abacos were scoured out. You know, you couldn't set in sand like you used to be able to. Um, but that's really the only difference. Yeah, we didn't go into Marsh Harbor. We heard that was pretty decimated. Uh, but the towns are rebuilding and you know, every town already has buildings that were hit from another hurricane. So it was definitely a little worse this time in the Abacos. The rest of the islands, I didn't notice anything in, in terms of on land. No, I mean, they've been dealing with hurricanes forever, yeah. so. Uh, Kathleen asks, uh, what made you choose sailing over an RV? Which do you think is easier at what age and why? Well, this is about the easiest question in the bunch. RVing, you know, we've had three different RVs uh, and four boats. The RVing is so much easier at any age. I mean, Hey, honey, do you want to go there? Boop, 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 boop. It tells you how long it's going to take and how much fuel you're going to use. You get in, buy some groceries, and you're gone. Yeah. The boating is way, way more complicated, way harder at any age. But we chose the boating because we like to take the road less traveled, and there are no roads out here. You go wherever you, you need to go. So RVing is like being in the stadium watching the football players yeah. and boating's like being the football player. Yeah. <laughs> There's yeah. your difference. And we did a video comparing, so we'll put that link below too. Yeah. Okay. Marjorie <clears throat> says, have you ever considered, considered putting a trash compactor on board? And I would say that's a no because I've never had a trash compactor. Uh, that makes some sense. I don't know how much energy that would take. Yeah, but, I don't know where we put a trash compactor. Yeah. We haven't thought about it. This is, how's the vinyl wrap holding up? With hindsight, is there anything different you'd have done? Uh, it's holding up great. We've scratched it a few times. The repairs are a five minute process. It doesn't seem to be faded. Can you no, tell? Not yeah, at all. It's, it's been on about 15 months or so. Uh, is there anything we'd do different? Yes, there is something we'd do different. Uh, Burl, Burl at the time, he's the guy who installed the wrap, said, hey, you want to do some sort of fun design? And we said, no, 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 let's just do gray. And I think it looks sharp. But it'd be cool to do some sort of design. Yeah, maybe just even having like the clarity on the, the bottom of the water line. The name. Yeah. Did you put things in the storage unit when you moved down to your boat? Eh, kind of. Uh, we've got storage in the basement of uh, my mom's property. It's just the corner of the basement. Dishes and linens and... And there's about four boxes of <clears throat> the memorabilia that we'll never get rid of. Uh, some old artwork and two paddle boards, a couple bikes. And so. She's got a follow-up question that's unrelated. Do you know of anyone that dealt with vertigo on a monohull, but it wasn't an issue on a catamaran? Uh, not specifically, but I will say that in, if you do have seasickness, it's going to be much harder on a monohull. You've got bigger movement. 
Doesn't mean you won't be affected on a catamaran because it, it moves just faster. Okay, Louise says, after your snake on the boat encounter, what other sea life and or on the beach types of hazards are there to look out for? How about barnacles on the holes when scrubbing? Climbing off the dinghy onto the shoreline with spiky poisonous things. What would you do in the case of being zapped? And what kind of preventative meds do you carry on the boat to treat these things? Oh, this is easy. There's one critter that bugs us more than anything else. It's called a noceum. They're sand flies. And that's something that bothers me on the beach. It me too. They, they give me hives. They, they get you worse than me. But, uh, you know, you feel a little pinch on the beach that day. But two days later, it turns into these itchy, itchy welts. It's just, it's horrendous. And they, they take a while to go away. Uh, other than that, we've got like fire coral. You want to stay away from fire coral. We do keep Keflex and EpiPen on, on board and your basic antibiotics, antibacterials. And we did a medical kit uh, video. We'll also put that in the description below. Yeah. But good question. In the Bahamas, when we're getting off the dinghy, I do look in the sand to make sure there's not a sleeping ray in there. Oh, this, this one's good. <laughs> uh, Peter asks, what is the meaning of life? That's easy. It's just to enjoy life. And that's, love. Yeah, that's the meaning. That's the purpose. Yes. Yeah. Enjoy, love, laugh. Yeah. yeah. I don't think you can do much better than that. Nope. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Andre says, what do you guys think about the new Bollies? The no nets? Uh, well, we haven't sailed the Bollies, so there's not a lot we can say. Um... I don't really like the idea of the solid forward yeah. trampoline area. I, I like, like the nets. I like to have the nets because the air can come through, the waves can come through if they're crashing through. Yeah. But you know, we got to stay true to our our ethical standards and not really comment on designs that we've never experienced. So yeah, we I don't, don't know. know. Don't know. Notice that Megan loves to cook. Is there anything that you wanted to have? What is there anything you want to make on the boat that you can't make? Uh, any appliances that you can't live without? I think I can make pretty much anything. I can't roast nuts for 12 hours, and that's what I would like a dehydrator for. Okay. But I think a dehydrator is too big. We can't do it without the soda stream. And we, the Blendtec. We need the soda stream. We drink that the fizzy water all the time. How do you know if your pets will like sailing? You can't know. No, and uh, I. I, I have an answer. Just about all the dogs that we've met seem to be doing just fine on yeah. boats. Um, cats, now we had two cats on our first boat. At first they seemed to be okay, but over time we got out in some weather. And then they would throw up every time the engine came on and we just They didn't knew, like it. Yeah. yeah, so we gave them to my buddy back in Portland and that was the right move. Yeah, that worked out well. But dogs... Every once in a while, there's a dog that won't go to the bathroom on board, and that can be an issue, but uh, pretty infrequent. And I think also pets are so attuned to your energy, and so if you're calm, I think they'll be calm. Yeah. Uh, do you have any advice for future sailors with physical handicaps? I have severe arthritis and limited mobility in my ankles. When I watch all the ways you have to move in your boat, I shudder. How would you outfit a boat to help someone with mobility problems? Uh, have you run into sailors with similar challenges? Yeah, I mean, there's a few things. I think, I, I think you can overcome some of these challenges by, you know, if you've got a weak arm, you know, strengthen that other arm. Uh, you can get winch handles that take two hands instead of one. Electric winches. Electric winches will help. You having can, crew. <clears throat> having crew, you can set up purchase systems so you've got pulleys that go back and forth, up and down, reducing the stress. Uh, there is a catamaran builder uh, designer called Dazcat, D-A-Z-C-A-T, and they are making uh, wheelchair accessible catamarans. Uh, do some Googling on that, but uh, if you've got arthritis, you want to be really realistic about how much you can grip, and that may limit the size of boat that you can that you can sail. Yeah. But there's always crew. Crew can be nice, yes. and crew's great for polishing the boat too, <laughs> keeping things clean. Okay, Bianca says, how do you choose which anchorage to go to? What features do you look for? Good question. Um, I would say one of the things we look for at the top of the list is what direction is the wind coming from? Yeah, we want to be on the, the lee side. Yeah, what's the forecast? And then we like anchorages that aren't heavily populated. We like to have a lot of space around us. Mm -hmm. uh, good holding, you know, the active captain, you can see notes from previous people. Right, right. So we like to have a little bit of privacy around us. Uh, 
And we want protection from the wind and swell. Those are the primary considerations that we look yeah. at. <gasps> That's it. Wow, we got through oh, it. Oh, this is... Uh, uh, this is <laughs> That's so funny. We this, did not plan this. This is a doozy. <laughs> uh, I don't know how you say that name. Uh, Vinix... Vinicius? Vinicius. Vinicius. Have you ever considered quitting? Mm. Not only have we considered quitting, we've quit. <laughs> Uh, this is boat number four. Uh, we have quit cruising twice before. We are I, good quitters. Yeah, we're good quitters. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and on this boat, have we considered quitting? I I wouldn't say very seriously, but there have been days where it's been like, uh, you know, this is, we got to move on to something else. And I would say since we started YouTubing a couple years ago, that thought rarely comes. Right. I mean, this is this has taken on a whole life of its own, and, and we really enjoy sharing the experience with you guys. It gives us a sense of purpose. And that was maybe the big thing that we felt was missing at the times when we decided it might be time yeah. to cash in and go back. You know, I mean, there's always the, the bank account issue, but I think for a lot of folks, you know, if, if it's not a physical limitation or the health of their parents failing, you know, it's feeling like you want to go accomplish something else in your life. Yeah. And having the YouTube really fills that fills that for us. Yeah. So, no, I wouldn't say we've thought much about quitting. Every once in a while when something's broken and I don't have the part, I go, you know, there's got to be an easier way. <laughs> but then I re realize and remember just how privileged we are to be doing this. Yeah. And I appreciate every day. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that these questions and answers were valuable and keep sending us questions. Yeah, we, we love being of some use and help to you. If you're dreaming about this or thinking about doing it, or maybe you're getting ready to go, we like to be a part of the conversation. Yeah. Uh, if you want to join the Facebook group, I've noticed we've got a lot of knowledgeable sailors yeah. in the group. So you're not just relying on our experience, but the experience of a whole lot of folks that have got a a lot of miles out there so so join the Facebook group it's a good crowd everybody seems to behave themselves be really really nice and yeah, kind supportive it's very supportive so uh, yeah. drop on by say hi and a huge thank you to our patrons yes. Wow we are so grateful and you really are making this show possible the boats had quite a few problems this season uh, things that needed to be remedied and fixed it's been kind of an expensive season in that regard, so we really appreciate having the financial support that makes yeah. us feel a little bit more secure in this whole thing. Yes. All right, we'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.